I do try to keep away from you, Ian, but your willingness to spread disinformation knows no bounds. You are not intellectually challenged. You are not illiterate in the subject areas on which you speak. You have, at the very least, access to the same information as I do, and you have free reign over what you choose to present in your for-profit videos. The logical conclusion is therefore that you are a persistent and egregious liar, deliberately disseminating false information in the knowledge that confirmation bias and your audience's willingness to take you on your word will keep the dollars rolling in. And there appears to be no limit to what you are prepared to say or do to make a fast buck. I recently saw your interviewing Carl Bohr, which I assume was a test of your audience's credibility as you prepared to milk their bank accounts once again to fund your Noah's Ark story, presumably after Disney, Aardman and Pixar turned your plot down as lacking realism. So why was it that I considered your most recent effluent had passed the critical point at which I could no longer ignore it in favour of more interesting projects. Well, in June of 2012, at the Pipestone Creek Dinosaur Initiative, not far out of Grand Prairie, Alberta, a fossil hadrosaur dinosaur was found with actual intact skin. Actual intact skin. Are you sure, Ian? The screen behind you clearly states skin fossil. Dr. Phil Bell from the University of Regina and Dr. Frederico Fantai of, from the University of Bologna in Italy have been working the Pipestone Creek site and the unfossilized dinosaur skin. Unfossilized dinosaur skin. Ian, read the screen behind you. Is undergoing studies in a machine called a synchrotron at the Canadian Light Source. They're trying to determine the actual color of the dinosaur. Now we've said it before and we'll say it again. This dinosaur is alleged to be 70 million years old. Do you really think that dinosaur skin could remain undecayed, unfossilized, preserved for 70 million years? No Ian, but the screen behind you clearly states skin fossil. Am I missing something here? The evidence is that this dinosaur is young, perhaps thousands of years old, certainly not millions. Evidence? What evidence, Ian? The only evidence I see is that you are prepared to lie through your teeth, even when standing in front of a visual which clearly states that this paper is discussing fossilized skin. The evidence from the dinosaurs and forensics strongly points to the dinosaurs being killed in a worldwide flood just a few thousand years ago. How do you make that leap, Ian? What have you possibly seen in this paper which indicates a worldwide flood killed this dinosaur? Evidence, evidently, has a different meaning in your world. If your fantasy picture was reality, and every creature that lived before 4,000 years ago had been buried in a global flood, we would not be able to dig a single post hole without turning up a dinosaur, skin intact. And the permafrost would have more dinosaurs than mammoths falling out of it. The reason why paleontologists find only fossiled dinosaur bones 99.999% of the time is because your flood is a fiction. Now, to the science. This is dinosaur skin. This is mummified skin. Bog bodies are mummified by a process of tanning due to the chemical composition of the bog water. Tanning alters the protein structure of the skin. The tanning chemicals bonding with chemicals in the skin which make it resistant to decay. Is it still skin? Well, it's not human skin. It's tanned human skin. The chemistry of the skin is altered, though much of the original organics are there. You would not be in a rush to chew on tanned skin. Dinosaur skin is originally mummified in much the same way. In the rare cases when it's deposited in an environment with the right chemical balance to protect the skin from both external and internal bacteria. 
which would otherwise consume the organic material. And then the dinosaur is fossilized. Often all of its organic material is replaced with minerals from its surroundings. Now, no geologist would be surprised by finding some organic material surviving fossilization, uh, nor should anyone who drives a car, which actually runs on organic materials which have survived millions of years. Soft dinosaur tissue, such as skin, is very rarely preserved. Paleontologists are used to finding dinosaur bones. If they find several associated bones, I would imagine the excitement rises. The jackpot is to find a complete or near complete dinosaur skeleton. They may also, if they are fortunate, find skin imprints. This is where the texture of the skin has been captured in the sediment encasing the dinosaur and the imprint remains long after the skin has been consumed by natural processes. But in a few cases, just three according to this report, though I think I've read of more elsewhere, paleontologists have found not just skin imprints, but three-dimensional skin fossils. This is not skin. It is not even mummified skin. It is the result of the skin being preserved from decay long enough to be mineralized in the fossilization process. Because this is a sample of three-dimensional skin, there is a possibility that the minutest cell structures within the skin have been preserved, and this provides a rare opportunity for scientists to learn much more about dinosaurs. The skin can tell you whether a dinosaur had scales, fur or feathers, and potentially, of course, what colour it was. It adds tremendously to the understanding we have of these creatures. Mentioned in the article are melanosomes. Melanosomes are organelles, that is, subcellular structures containing melanin. What they are looking for in Alberta is to follow the lead of Zhang et al., who published in Nature in February 2010. This paper sets out to provide proof that cell structures identified in particular fossilized dinosaurs were indeed fossilized melanosomes, and in the process prove both that what others had claimed were decayed skin fibers were actually feathers, and also that they could determine the actual color of the dinosaur from the shape of the melanosomes. This paper claims to demonstrate that sub-micrometer-sized bodies within the fossilized feathers are indeed melanosomes by discounting that they might be fossilized bacteria or diagenetic minerals, that is, minerals which have replaced organic material. The paper provides strong evidence that specific organelles are present based on the shape of structures identified and that the structures are preserved as carbon, further suggesting they were originally organic in origin. You can see that the examination is at the sub-microscopic level. An optical microscope has a practical limit of about 200 nanometers. These samples are viewed through a scanning electron microscope, which bombards the sample with electrons and uses various sensors to detect both electrons reflected by the sample and electrons freed from the actual atoms in the sample by the electron beam. So what are we seeing? Wogelius et al. released a paper in Science in September 2011. This paper details the results of using synchrotron X-ray techniques to identify the chemical residue of melanin pigments. Going beyond Zhang et al., who had relied on the shape of the nanostructures, Wogelius et al. examined their samples for organometallic residue, that is, residue of metals that had an organic origin, rather than being from the mineralized sediment in which the fossil was found. This was done by looking for the metals that would be expected in melanin-rich organelles and considering their distribution through the specimen. They then also compared the distribution across samples and looked at samples taken from a variety of fossil and extant species to validate their conclusions. These two papers show what incredible progress modern science has made in enriching our understanding of the history of our planet and specifically the evolution of feathers and flight amongst the dinosaurs. Contrast this with the deliberate lies and flippant ignorant dismissal by Juby, who is more interested in making a cheap, factually inaccurate and deceitful point to an audience too lazy or too indoctrinated to question his word in the knowledge 
that they will send him their hard-earned dollars so that he does not have to work for a living. It sickens me to my stomach.